Welcome, welcome to another exciting week of reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLV. This week we are going to continue in the book of Hebrews, actually. We're going to do the entire book, all 13 chapters of this book. And we are doing the version of the Bible that we're, we have been reading through is the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, the TLV. And this is the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. So before we get started, I'm going to open with our opening prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is faithful and true. And we thank you for the ability to be together, to be in your word, to study your word. We ask the Holy Spirit, come and guide us, direct us, and lead us. And open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart and teach us the things that we need to, to learn from this week's lesson. And help us to incorporate this into our daily lives and our walk with you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, Amen and Amen. So we're going to get started here with the introduction. The letter to the Hebrews, though the title is not original to the book. It is written to Jewish believers in Yeshua of the first century, as we can tell from the content. At one time, the author, who is not named, was thought to be Paul, but scholars today agree that the author is unknown, but many still lead towards Paul. Whoever he is, he is thoroughly skilled in, the, in his handling of the Greek language, the Septuagint, and Jewish thought, particularly with reference to the temple service. The date, though not firmly known, appears to be before 70 AD. And we can conclude this from remarks that the Old Covenant is close to vanishing. And that, that is found in, in chapter 8, verse 13. And the question, would they not have ceased to be offered? What we'll be reading in chapter 10, which suggests that the temple sacrifice official system was still operative at that time. More important, so that had to be before 70 AD because we know the second temple was, was destroyed in that year. More important than the author or date is the situation of the Jewish believers being addressed despite their maturity and sophistication. Some were on the road to abandoning their faith altogether and returning to Judaism minus Yeshua. They were being treated as outsiders or even traitors to the Jewish people and undergoing trials and persecution, though apparently no one had yet become a martyr. Others were following strange teachings and had even stopped meeting with other believers for worship, but returning to traditional Judaism would also mean laying aside the faith that Yeshua had opened a way into the heavenly sanctuary, allowing for direct access to God and face-to-face -face prayer. The author of Hebrews is quite concerned for the faith of these Jewish followers of Yeshua. Much of the letter is given to showing that Yeshua, the incarnate God of Israel himself, is greater than anyone else, greater than the angels, greater than Moses, the bringer of, the, of a greater covenant with a greater priesthood than before, and a greater sacrifice that fully atones for our sins. Since this is true, abandoning Yeshua is equivalent to turning away from the God of Israel. Along with the emphasis on Yeshua come several passages illustrated from the Tanakh, warning that turning from trust in Yeshua will bring consequences. But the author wants to encourage, not scold. He, he points in chapter 11 to a hall of fame of Jewish heroes who follow God in spite of obstacles and even persecution, setting an example for us today. To those who persevere, a Sabbath rest with the Lord is promised. And how does perseverance come? by focusing on Yeshua, the initiator and perfecter of faith. Amen. So we're going to begin with chapter one, superiority of the son. And many times and in many ways, God spoke long ago to the fathers through the prophets. In these last days, he, he has spoken to us through a son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he created the universe. The sun is the radiance of his glory and the imprint of his being, upholding all things by his powerful word. 
when he had made purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Thus he became as far above the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son? Today I have become your father, and again I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. To none of them, but to Yeshua he did. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And regarding the angel, he says, He makes his angels winds and his servants a flame of fire. But regarding the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. And in the beginning, Adonai, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall pass away, but you remain, and they will all wear out like clothing. And like a robe, you will roll them out. And like clothing, they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years shall never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not ministering spirits sent out for service to those about to inherit salvation? Chapter 2, Warning Not to Drift Away For this reason it is necessary for us to pay especially close attention to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved to be firm, and every violation and disobedience received a just payback, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It was first spoken through the Lord and confirmed to us by those who heard. At the same time, God was testifying by signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Ruach HaKadosh, according to his will. And of course, the Ruach HaKadosh is the Holy Spirit. Yeshua, greater than angels. For it is not to angels that God has subjected the Olam Haba. And the Olam Haba means the world to come. Okay? He did not subject. He, he, for it is not to angels that God has subjected the, the world to come, the Olam Haba, about which we speak. But somewhere, someone has testified saying, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? For a little while you made him lower than the angels, you crowned him with glory and honor, you put all things in, subjected, in subjection underneath his feet. For when he put all things in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control, but for now we do not yet see all things subjected to him, but we see one who is made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Yeshua. He is crowned with glory and honor because of the death he suffered, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for God for whom and through whom all things exist in leading many sons to glory to, to per perfect through to per perfect through suffering the initiator of their salvation for both he who sanctifies and those who those being sanctified are all from one so he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters saying i will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation i will sing praise to you and again i will put my trust in him and again here am i and the children of god and the children god has given me Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same humanity, so that through death he might break the power of the one who had the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who by fear of death were in bondage all their lives. For surely he is not concerned about angels, but about the seed of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in all things, so he might become a merciful and faithful Kohen Gadol high priest, in matters relating to God to make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when put to the test, he is able to help those being tested. Chapter 3, Yeshua is greater than Moses. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, partners in a heavenly calling, take notice of Yeshua, the emissary and Kohen Gadol, the high priest, we affirm.
He was faithful to the one who appointed him in his house, as was Moses also, for he had considered he had been considered worthy of more glory than Mo Moses, even as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses surely was faithful in all God's house as a servant for a witness of things to be spoken later. But Messiah as son is over God's house, and we are his house, if we hold firm to our boldness and what we are proud of. Listen and obey, or harden and fall away. Therefore, just as the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. On the day of testing in the wilderness, there your fathers put me to the test, though they saw my works for forty years. Therefore, I was provoked by this generation, and I said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. And I swore in my wrath, They shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you has an evil heart of unbelief that falls away from the living God, but encourage one another day by day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Messiah if we hold our original conviction firm until the end. As it is said today, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Now, which ones heard and rebelled? Indeed. Was it not all who came out of Egypt with Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? Was it not to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were not able to enter in because of lack of trust. In chapter 4, make every effort to enter God's rest. Let us fear then. Though a promise of entering his rest is left open, some of you would seem to have fallen short. For we also have had good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the word they heard did not help them because they were not unified with those who listened in faith. For we who have trusted are entering into that rest. It is just as God said. So in my wrath I swore they shall never enter my rest even though his works were finished since the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in, in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, they shall never enter my rest. So then it remains for some to enter in, into it, yet those who formerly had good news proclaimed to them did not enter because of disobedience. Again, God appoints a certain day today, saying, through David, after so long a time, just as it had been before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So there remains a Shabbat rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered God's rest has also ceased from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one may fall through the same pattern of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing right through to a separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from him, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Yeshua, our compassionate Kohen Gadol. Therefore, since we have a great Kohen Gadol who has passed through the heavens, Yeshua ben Elohim, let us hold firmly to our confessed allegiance, for we do not have a Kohen Gadol who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all the same ways, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. Chapter 5. For every Kohen Gadol taken from among men is appointed to act on behalf of people in matters relating to God, so that he may offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to empathize with the ignorant and deluded, since he himself also is subject to weaknesses. To weakness. For this reason, he has to make offerings for sins, just as for the people, so also for himself. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only 
when he is called by God, as Aaron was. So also Messiah did not glorify himself to be made Kohen Gadol. Rather, it was God who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in a different passage, You are a Kohen forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And that's a different order than what the, the Levite priests had gone through. You know, the order that came down through Aaron. In the days of his life on earth, Yeshua offered up both prayers and pleas with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Though he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God Kohen Gadol, according to the order of Melchizedek. Moving on to maturity about this subject, there is much for us to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become sluggish in hearing. For although you ought to be teachers by this time, again, you need someone to teach you the basics of God's things. You have come to need milk, not solid food. For anyone living on milk is inexperienced with the teaching about righteousness. He is an infant. But solid food is for the mature who, through practice, have their senses trained to discern both good and evil. Chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the basic teaching of the Messiah, let us move on toward maturity, not laying against, again, a foundation of repentance from dead works and of trusting God, of teaching about immersions, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Now this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who once were enlightened, having tasted of the heavenly gift and be become partakers of the Ruach, Kakadesh, and having tasted the good word of God and the powers of the Olam Haba, the world to come, and then having fallen away to renew again to repentance, since they are again crucifying Ben Elohim for themselves and publicly disgracing him. Yeah, Yeshua died once. So to do this over and over and over again, uh -uh. for the earth, having soaked up the rain frequently falling on it, brings forth vegetation use, useful to those for whom it is farmed, and it shares in God's blessings. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed. Its end is to be burned over. But even though we speak like this, loved ones concerning you, we are convinced of better things, things coming with salvation, for God is not unjust, so as to forget your work and the love that you showed for his name in having served and continuing to serve the Kedashim, the saints, the holy ones. But we long for each of you to show the same eagerness for the certainty of hope to the very end, so you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those inheriting the promises through trust and perseverance, the promise and the oath. Now, when God made his promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you, and surely I will multiply you. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham reached the promise. For people swear by someone greater, and the oath is confirmation, is an end to all their disputing. In the same way, God determining to point out more clearly to the heirs of the promise, the unchanging nature of his purpose guaranteed it with an oath. So by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, and God does not lie, and it's impossible for him to lie, he's holy, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. We have this hope. As an anchor of the soul, both firm and steady, a hope that enters the inner place behind the curtain. Yeshua has entered there as a forerunner on our behalf, having become Kohen Gadol forever, the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. He is our high priest. He is our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords forever. Chapter 7, Melchizedek of Kohen forever. For this, Melchizedek was king of Salem, Kohen of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings 
and blessed him and and to him abraham apportioned a tenth of everything first by the translation of his name he is king of righteousness and then also king of salem which is the king of shalom without father without mother without genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of his life but made like ben elohim he remains a kohen for all time now see how great this man is even abraham the patriarch gave him a tenth out of the plunder indeed those sons of of levi who received the priesthood have according to torah a command to collect a tithe from the people that is from their kin although they have come out of the loins of Abraham, but this one who did not have their genealogy has collected tithes from Abraham and has blessed him, the one holding the promises. Now it is beyond dispute that the lesser is blessed by the greater. In one case, dying men receive tithes, but in the other one about whom it is testified that he lives on. Through Abraham, even Levi, the one receiving tithes, has paid the tithes, so to speak, for he was still in his father's loins when Melchizedek met him. Yeshua, our Kohen Gedol, forever. Now, if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, for based on it, the people had been given the Torah, what further need was there for a different Kohen to arise? designated according to the order of Melchizedek, not according to the order of Aaron. For whenever the priesthood is altered, out of necessity, an alteration of law also takes place. For the one about whom these things are said belongs to another tribe, from which no one has officiated at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord has sprung forth from Judah concerning this tribe. Moses said nothing about Kohanim. And it is even more evident if another Kohen arises like Melchizedek, one made not by virtue of a Torah requirement of physical descent, but by virtue of the power of an indestructible life. For it is testified you are Kohen forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, a form of requirement is set aside because of its weakness and ineffectiveness, for Torah made nothing perfect. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced, introduced through which we draw near to God. Moreover, it was not without a sworn, sworn oath. Others indeed have become Kohanim without a sworn oath. But he, with an oath sworn by the one who, had, who said to him, Adonai has sworn and will not change his mind, you are Kohen forever. How much more then has Yeshua become the guarantee of a better covenant? Now on the one hand, many have become Kohanim who through death are prevented from continuing in office. But on the other hand, the one who does remain forever has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save completely those who draw near to God through him, always living to make intercession for them. For such a Kohen Gadol, Gadol, for such a Kohen Gadol was fitting for us, holy, guiltless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, he has no need to offer up sacrifices day by day, like those other Kohen, Kohenim Gedolim, Gedolim, first for their own sins and then for the sins of the people. And now that statement is also referring to the high priest, first for their own sins and then for the sins of the people. For when he offered up himself, he did this once for all, for the Torah appoints the Kohen get a lean, men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the Torah appoints a son made perfect forever. Chapter 8, Yeshua, mediator of a better covenant. Now here is the main point being said. We do have such a Kohen Gadol who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, in the heavens. He is a priestly attendant of the holies and the true tent which Adonai set up, not man. For every Kohen Gadol is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, so it is necessary for this one also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a Kohen at all, since there are those who offer the gifts according to the Torah. They offer service in a replica and a foreshadower of the heavenlies, 
one that is just as Moses was instructed by God when he was about to complete the tabernacle. For he says, see that you make everything according to the design that was shown to you on the mountain. But now Yeshua has obtained a more excellent ministry insofar as he is the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. For if that first one had been faultless, there would not have been discourse seeking a second for finding fault with them. He says, behold, days are coming, says Adonai, when I will inaugurate a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not, not remain in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says Adonai, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Adonai. I will put my Torah into their mind, and upon their hearts I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no more will they teach each one his fellow citizen, and each one his brother, saying, No, Adonai, because all will know me from the least of them to the greatest, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. In saying new, he has treated the first as, as old, but what is being made old and aging is close to vanishing. Now, chapter 9, Messiah enters the heavenly holies. Now, even the first one had regulations for worship and the earthly sanctuary. For a tent was prepared in the outer part were the menorah, the table, and the presentation of the bread. This is called the holy place. Beyond the second curtain was a dwelling called the Holy of Holies. It held a golden altar of incense in the Ark of the Covenant, completely covered with gold. In the Ark was a golden jar holding the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. But it is not now possible to speak in detail about these things. Now, with these things prepared this way, the Kohanim do continually enter into the outer tent while completing their services, but into the inner once a year, the Kohen Gadol alone, and not without blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this, the Ruach HaKadosh makes clear that the way into the holies has not yet been revealed, while the first tent is still standing, it is a symbol for the present time. Accordingly, gifts and sacrifices are being offered that cannot make the worshiper perfect with respect to conscience. These relate only to food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until a time of setting things straight. But when Messiah appeared as Kohen Gadol of the good things they that have now come, passing through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, he entered into the holies once and for all, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant in order that those called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has taken place that redeems them from violations under the first covenant. For where there is a covenant, the death of the one who made it must be established where covenant is secured upon the basis of dead bodies, since it has no strength as long as the one who made it lives. That is why not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood, for when every commandment had been spoken by Moses to all the people according to the Torah, he took the blood of the calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and he sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. He said, This is the blood of the covenant which God commanded you. And in the same way, he sprinkled the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry with the blood. And nearly everything is purified in blood according to the Torah and set apart from the shedding of blood. There is no forgiveness. Therefore, it was necessary for the replicas of these heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves 
with better sacrifices than these, for Messiah did not enter into holies made with hands, counterparts of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in God's presence on our behalf. And he did not offer himself again and again. As the Kohen Gadol enters into the Holy of Holies year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have needed to suffer again and again from the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has been revealed once and for all at the close of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Messiah was offered once to bear the sins of many. He will appear a second time apart from sin in those eagerly awaiting him for salvation. Chapter 10, Perfect Pardon in the New Covenant. So I, I just want to mention when we do communion, this is why we're doing it in remembrance. There are some denominations that are indicating that he's dying again and again and again. And that is not, that is not what we're supposed to do. He said, do this in remembrance of me. These elements, the body and the blood, um, the bread and the, and the cup. But no, he died once and that's it. Perfect pardon in the new covenant, chapter 10. The Torah has a shadow of, the good things to come, not the form itself of the realities. For this reason, it can never, by means of the same sacrifices they offer constantly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers cleansed once and for all would no longer have consciousness of sins? But in these sacrifices is a reminder of sins year after year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So when Messiah comes into the world, he says, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me in whole burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not delight. Then I said, behold, I come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it, it, it is written of me. After saying above, sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire nor did you delight in them those who offered according to torah then he said behold i come to do your will he takes away the first to establish the second by his will we have been made holy through the offering of the body of messiah yeshua once for all indeed every kohen stands day by day serving and offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But on the other hand, when this one offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from then on until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected forever those being made holy. The Ruach HaKadosh also testifies to us, for after saying this is the covenant that I will cut with them. After those days, says Adonai, I will put my Torah upon their hearts and upon their minds. I will write it. Then he says, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Now where there is removal of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Let us pray boldly in God's presence. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have boldness to enter into the Holy Holies by the blood of Yeshua, he inaugurated a new and living way for us through the curtain, that is, his flesh. We also have a Kohen Gadol over God's household. So let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the unwavering confession of hope, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good deeds. And do not neglect our own meetings, as is the habit of some, but encourage one another, and all the more so as you see the day approaching. For if we keep on sinning willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. So you need to be careful of that. So can you lose your salvation? Yeah, you can if you... If you if, if you, according to that, if 
you go on willfully doing doing what you're not supposed to be doing but only a terrifying expectation of judgment and fury of fire about to devour the enemies of god anyone who rejected the torah of moses dies without compassion on the word of two or three witnesses how much more severe do you think the punishment will be for the one who has trampled ben elohim the son of god underfoot and has regarded as unholy the blood of the covenant by which he was made holy and has insulted the spirit of grace for we know the one who said vengeance is mine i will repay and again and i will judge his people it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living god suffering perfects yeshua's followers but remember the former days when after you were enlightened you endured a great struggle with sufferings Sometimes you were publicly exposed to abuses and afflictions, and other times you became partners with those who were treated this way. You, for you, suffered along with the with the prisoners and joy, joyfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you have for yourself a better and lasting possession. Therefore, do not lose your boldness, which has great reward, for you need perseverance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet, in a very little while the coming one will come and he will not delay but my righteous one shall live by emuna emuna and that is faith e-m-u-n-a-h and if he shrinks back my soul takes no pleasure in him but we are not among the timid ones on the path to destruction but among the faithful ones on the path to preservation of the soul and chapter 11 the faithful see from afar now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of realities not seen for by it the elders received commendation for by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of god so that what is seen did not come from anything physical by faith abel offered god a better sacrifice than cain through faith he was commended as righteous when god approved of his gifts and through faith he still speaks although he is dead by faith enoch was taken so as not to see death and he was not found because god took him for because he was taken he was commended as pleasing to god now without faith it is impossible to please god for the one who comes to god must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him by faith noah when warned about events not yet seen in holy fear prepared an ark for the safety of his household through faith he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith by faith abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place he was to receive as an inheritance he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he migrated to the land of promise as if it were foreign dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob fellow heirs of the same promise for he was waiting for the city that has foundations whose architect and builder is god by faith even sarah herself herself received ability to conceive when she was barren and past the age since she considered the one who had made the promise to be faithful so from one and him as good as dead were fathered offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and an uncountable and as uncountable as the sand on the seashore these all died in faith without receiving the, the things promised, but they saw them and welcomed them from afar, and they confessed that they were strangers and sojourners on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If indeed they had been thinking about where they had come from, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they yearn for a better land that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them amen by faith abraham when he was tested offered up isaac yes he who had received the promises was offering up his one and only son the one about whom it was said through isaac offspring shall be named for you he reasoned that god was able to raise him up even from the dead and in a sense he did receive him back from there by faith isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even concerning things to come by faith, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed 
each of the sons of Joseph, and he bowed in worship while leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, made mention of the exodus of Benaiah Israel and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was an extraordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's decree. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose to suffer mistreatment along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. He considered the disgrace of Mes he considered the disgrace of Messiah as greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, for he preserved as if seeing the one who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the smearing of the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn whom would not touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as if on dry ground. When the Red Sea, at, I'm sorry, when the Egyptians tried it, they were swallowed up. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were circled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she welcomed the spies with shalom. And what more shall I say? For some would fall, I'm sorry, for, for, for time would fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, also of David and Samuel, and the prophets. By faith, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the powers of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, and made foreign armies flee. Women received their dead raised back to life, and others were tortured after not accepting release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others experienced the, the trial of mocking and scourging, yes, and even chains in prison. They were stoned and they were sawed in two, as, as in Isaiah the prophet. They were murdered with a sword. They went around in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered around in deserts and mountains, caves and holes in the ground. And all these though commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that only with us would they reach perfection. Chapter 12, running the race with discipline. Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also get rid of every weight and entangling sin. Let us run with endurance the race set before us. Focusing on Yeshua, the initiator and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and he has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary in your souls and lose heart. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of bloodshed. Have you forgotten the warning addressed? To you as sons, my son, do not take lightly the discipline of Adonai or lose heart when you are corrected by him, because Adonai disciplines the ones he loves and punishes every son he accepts. It is for discipline that you endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son does a father not discipline? But if you are without discipline, something all have come to share, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Besides, we are used to have, having human fathers as instructors, and we respected them. Shall we, not much, shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and, and lives? Indeed, for a short time, they discipline us, seemed best to them, but he does so for our benefit so that we may share in his holiness. Now, all di discipline seems painful at the moment, not joyful, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, um, therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight 
paths for your feet so that what is lame will not be pulled out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue shalom with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and see to it that no bitter root springs up and causes trouble and by it many be defiled. Also see to it that there is no immoral or godless person like Esau who sold his birthright for one meal. For you know that later when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected rejected he found no chance for repentance though he begged for it with tears entering the unshakable kingdom for you have not come to a mountain that can be touched to a blazing and to a blazing fire and to darkness and gloom and storm and to the blast of a shofar and a voice whose words made those who heard it beg that not another word be spoken to them for they could not bear what was commanded if even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am quaking with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the myriads of angels, a joyous gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are written in a scroll in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous ones made perfect, and to Yeshua, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks of something better than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who is warning them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns us from heaven. His voice shook the earth then, but now he is promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now this phrase, yet once more, shows the removal of those things that are shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain therefore since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us show gratitude through this we may offer worship in a manner pleasing to god with reverence and awe for our god is a consuming fire and the final chapter brotherly love in the community let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for in doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember the prisoners as if you were fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you were also suffering bodily. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed kept undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Keep your lifestyle free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For God himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you, so that with confidence we say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what will man do to me. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, and that have not benefited those occupied by them. We have an altar from which those serving in the tabernacle have no right to eat, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holies by the Kohen Gadol as an offering for sin are burnt outside the camp. Therefore, to make the people holy through his own blood, Yeshua also suffered outside the gate. So let us go to him outside the camp, bearing his disgrace. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the one that is to come. Through Yeshua, then, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Do not neglect doing good and sharing for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as ones who might give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us, for we are convinced that we have a clear conscience desiring to conduct ourselves honorably in all things. I especially urge you to do this, so that I may be restored to you sooner. Closing blessing. Now may the God of Shalom, who brought who, who brought up from the dead and great shepherd of the sheep, 
by the blood of an everlasting covenant, our Lord Yeshua, make you complete in every good thing to do his will, accomplishing in us what is pleasing in his sight, through Messiah Yeshua, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Final greeting, but I urge you, brothers and sisters, listen patiently to this word of exhortation, for in fact, I have given, I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon, I will visit with, I will visit you with him. Greet all of your leaders and all the Kedashim, those from Italy, greet you. Grace be with you all. And that is the end of the book of Hebrews. We're going to quickly recap. Now, again, the book of Hebrews was written sometime before 70 AD because they're talking about temple worship and all of that. And, and anything after 70 AD, we know the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Um, it is thought that the, this is written by Paul. There were some scholars suggest it's written by Barnabas or Apollos, but again, um, it is written by somebody, someone that has good command of the Greek and the Hebrew and, and has good uh, knowledge of the gospel as well and of Yeshua. Very, very solid. Um, so the central message is Christ, the author of a new covenant or the superiority of Jesus Christ over the old covenant. So we see that Yeshua is better than the prophets, the angels, Moses, Joshua, Aaron as priest. He, the new covenant is, is superior because of Yeshua. Um, and it opened up a better tabernacle, was sealed by a better sacrifice, settled forever our salvation. And there was assurance in, in the book of Hebrews, we have the assurance of faith, a working faith, patience and direction, instruction in our walk and worship. And again, um, this was written for those who were tempted to look back and turn back to Judaism, those, those who had, um, those Jews that had followed Yeshua. And the thrust of this book is to show Yeshua is superior to all of that. He is the Kohen Gadol um, from the order of Melchizedek. And that is very well spelled out. Um, so um, Paul also uh, told the Jewish believers that some of them ought to be teaching, but instead they chose to remain to be as babes in Christ, thus staying on the milk and bottle rather than eat the good food and grow up and be mature believers, Christians, um, and have things changed much since those times. Uh, yeah, some, some are not reading the Bible. They're not learning what they need to learn and maturing. Um, and we certainly encourage you to be active in, in your walk, you know, with the Lord and grow every day. Um, the other thing um, that is stated in Hebrews 6, uh, therefore let us go unto maturity and let us move from the mere foundation of the following six facts. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptism, baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, eternal judgment. That is maturing in those things, you know. Um, and Hebrews 6, 4 to 5 warns us about falling away or backsliding. For those once enlightened, tasted of the heavenly gift, partakers of the Holy Spirit, tasted of the good word of God, tasted the powers of the world to come, and having fallen away, there is no if to renew them to repentance, they crucify to themselves the Son of God again. And, and, and he, he was only crucified once, and he's only going to do it once. So don't turn your back on Yeshua. I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to do that. I mean, he gave his life for us so that we may have eternal life. 
He didn't need to do that. But he chose to do that because he loved us. And um, the superiority of Yeshua is he came from a different order. He is the Kohen Gadol of all times, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it, this discussed the order of Melchizedek. Also brings up, you know, that uh, Abraham actually met Melchizedek and gave a tenth of a tithe to him. So, you know, in the first covenant um, that was that was given by God, um, there was fault in people because they, they kept falling away and they couldn't save themselves. Um, so the new covenant came through Yeshua and it opened a better way because Yeshua, his sacrifice of himself was perfect because he was perfect. So it settled forever our, our salvation and how how we get salvation is through Yeshua. So Yeshua was without spot. He was without blemish. He was without sin. And the new covenant um, was made through him because of that. And it was once and for all. And life in Yeshua gives us assurance of faith because of Yeshua's sacrifice. We can pray to God. Um, we can we can we can go to to God directly. There is no veil that 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 veil was torn from top to bottom uh, when Yeshua died on the cross. So. Um, and in in the the chapter of uh, Hebrews in the eleventh chapter, we see the Hall of Fame heroes of the Old Testament that are that are named. Absolutely, they, it goes through through all of them from Abel on down. Um, so, the final chapter actually in Hebrews. closes with a powerful teaching on the power of God, the death of Yeshua HaMashiach, the resurrection of him, of Jesus, Yeshua, and his present work, the everlasting covenant, the object of the work of Yeshua to restore what is well-pleasing in the eyes of God. And that is the end of our lesson for this week. Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much. We thank you for the very fact that you sent your one and only son for us. Because yes, humanity was in such a state that we could never be reconciled to you. But you gave us that the way, the truth, and the life through Yeshua. We love you, Yeshua, for what you have done for us. We ask that we stay close to you. The days, as you know, are evil. And we need to keep our focus on you. We're asking you for daily refreshment. And we thank you for that. We thank you for never leaving us and never forsaking us, for always being present with us, getting us through what we need to get through day by day while we're in this fleshly body, running the race for you, for you, and for the kingdom. We thank you. We love you. We worship and adore you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen and amen. Speaking of Yeshua, as you've heard, Yeshua died for our sins. We could never do that for ourselves. And no amount of sacrificing is will will take away the sins completely. It, it only covered it. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And Yeshua took 
all of the sins of the world with him on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and reconciled to the Father. If you are not born again and saved, you are a creation of God. You can become a child of God once you're born again and saved, born in the Spirit. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. He came to this earth specifically to redeem us. He was beaten badly before he went to the cross. And, and by his stripes, we are healed. So he took our illnesses, our afflictions with him. We can stand on those words. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that can do this. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but through him. So the world may tell you there are many paths to get to heaven. Well, that's a lie. And there's no purgatory either. You know, you don't get to go to a, a midway point where it's decided. No, you make that decision while you have breath in your lungs. You make that decision yourself. Choose this day whom you will serve. No one knows. You don't know when you may be breathing your last breath. So be sure you know where you're spending eternity. The life that we live on this earth is, is not infinite. It is finite. It will end. We know that. Um, but eternity is infinite. It will go on forever. Your spirit will go on forever. So where do you want to spend it? That's a choice that you make. So, and God gives us free will. But you know, Yeshua came here to die for us. Yeshua is his Hebrew name, Jesus. Jesus died for us. That is love that you cannot even imagine what he went through. And in his second coming, at, 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 every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. And choose wisely. If you are walking this world without Jesus, without Yeshua, you're already lost. But here's a chance that you can take right now. It's a promise. Salvation. He promises eternal life to those who call on his name and repent. Now, coming to him and asking for forgiveness, that's not with the intention of going out. As we read, you don't get forgiven and then go out and willfully go continue to do the same things over and over and over again, willfully. Repentance means you are getting forgiven, but you're changing, you're wanting to, you're, you're desiring and making an action to change your ways. So if you're ready to say this prayer with me, um, you can say this now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner and I need a savior. And I understand that savior is Yeshua, Jesus. I believe he died on a cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again. I believe he's coming again. I believe he is sitting at your right hand right now. I believe he is coming again. I don't want to be left behind. I do want to become a member of the family of God. I want to be a child of God. I'm asking you to forgive my sins, Jesus, Yeshua. And I'm asking you to come and live inside my heart and rule and reign in my life. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are Messiah. You are 
the high priest, the Savior, and I accept your gift of salvation and eternal life today. I'm asking you, please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me, direct me, lead me, teach me your way so that I can walk a better path. Thank you for all that you have done for me because I could not, not have done it myself. And I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved, I am healed by your stripes. I am born again, delivered and set free from sin and the consequences of sin. And now, healthy of mind, body, and soul in Jesus, Yeshua's precious and mighty an awesome name. Amen and amen. And if you've said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches and reads directly from the Word of God, not from doctrines of the world and doctrines of men. And please, uh, as you're joining a, a congregation, whether it be Messianic Jewish, or whether it be uh, Gentile Christian, um, please get a copy of the Bible. Know what you're being preached is sound doctrine. So, and how do you know that as you get into the Word of God yourself as well? Go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. There are multiple versions of the Bible. Um, pick a verse and and check out the different versions and which one resonates with you, I'd say go with because that's the one that you're more inclined to make a commitment to read it. And and then make a commitment to read the Bible on a day-to-day -day basis. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. You have now asked the Holy Spirit to live inside of you, to guide you. Holy Spirit is a wonderful teacher and he will show you things in the Bible that you may not see yourself um, as you're reading through. And, and each time you read it and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, there, there may be a different message for you because this is a living Bible from a living God. He breathed his word into 40 plus authors. So it is divinely inspired. Now I, with that, being said, I do need to caution you against getting Bibles from the 21st century. Unfortunately, mankind likes to cherry pick things. They don't like what's written in the Bible, so they've altered the Bible. Well, we're not to do that. And actually, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes because God Almighty is going to deal with those people. So we're not to add or subtract anything from the Word of God. So in doing things like that, um, I, like I said, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes and, and it's just simply cherry picking and taking things out that people don't like. Well, that doesn't make it right anyway. So if it's lacking and, and you're not teaching on it, um, those that are, those that are not teaching on things that they should be teaching on will also be held accountable. Now you can't, you know, people like to live in sin. So, you know, this is why they come up with these different versions that um, are, are not divinely inspired and they're, and they're not blessed of God. Uh, one of those versions is the Queen James version of the Bible. So there is no blessed blessing from God on that version of the Bible. Absolutely not. Um, and then there's a couple versions. Um, they have uh, changed the name of Israel to Jew. Uh, makes no sense to me when, uh, if you really read the Bible from front to back, that you know that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Not Jew, <laughs> but to Israel. And out of Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. So whoever decided to do that is just, I, I just, I don't, don't get it. <laughs> But um, it's just really ridiculous um, what people will do. And we're not to tamper with the word of God. God is the creator of all things, including his word. 
uh, we have no right to do that. So um, I'm, I will caution you against 21st century Bibles. There are excellent versions of the Bible that Bible that have been around for quite some time. We've got the King James Version. And I know that can be difficult for some people because we don't speak in, in Old English style um, language anymore for a long, long time, <laughs> I should say. Um, but there is the New King James Version of the Bible that is available. Then there's the NASB, the ESV, which is the English Standard Version, and that is a very solid um, version. We use the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version. That's very solid. The Complete Jewish Bible is very solid. They all have the 66 books of the Bible, so they are all solid. So those are some examples of, of good, solid um, doctrine Bibles that are out there. So anyway, I just that's my little note on, on that. And it is really important for you to, to be aware, you know, of what you're being taught, that it is sound doctrine. And that's the best way to know. And take it to the Lord in prayer. You, you know, a lot of people hear that, but there's something to that. The Lord will tell you. The Lord will guide you as you develop a relationship with him. And it's so important to develop a relationship with the Lord. He doesn't care what denomination you are. They That, that means nothing. And there's not going to be denom denominations in heaven either. It's your relationship with God. And he is your Abba Father now. You may call him Abba Father um, now that you've become a child of God. So you can relate to him. He loves you. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in Yeshua will not perish, but will have eternal life. That was love. Otherwise, we would not be able to be reconciled to him. It was the only way. As you join a Messianic congregation or a church, um, also look to see what small groups teaching groups that are, are, are there. Get, you can get involved in that. Um, prayer groups, um, Bible studies. You know, it's, it's always good. It's, you can never study the Bible enough. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you can go and, and be involved in a live Bible study, that, that would be great from the beginning. Um, but if they have one started, don't hesitate to just jump in and, and join them because you will definitely get something out of it. And the sharing part, the sharing and discussion, you know, with Bible studies are, are really, really enriching. So um, praying your prayer life. And like I said, relating to God, start talking to God. He hears you. He loves to hear his children speak to him and sing to him. Um, we are to sing praises to our Father in heaven. Absolutely. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say. And uh, welcome to the family of God once again. And we're going to close this Bible study out with the Aaronic benediction or the Aaronic blessing, priestly blessing. It's also called Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. Moses was told by God. The Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and to his sons, specific words that he wanted to bless the children of Israel with. He wanted to put his name on them. So as a child of God, as a member of the family of God, he loves to bless his children. He puts his name on you, seals you with his Holy Spirit. So this is a blessing for you as well. You have joined that family of God. So in, in Hebrew, it goes like this. Ibarakaka Adonai ve'ishmareka. Ya'ea Adonai panabaleka ve'kuneka. Isa Adonai panabaleka ve'yasemleka shalom. 
And in English, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. And it's early enough in the week to say Shavuot Tov, everyone. Have a good week.